Friends, Namaste to all of you. In my last audio presentation, I had given a brief overview on Swami Sri Ananda. In this session, I would like to share some of his teachings and also I have interposed these expressions as quoted in Bhagavad Gita. That means I am drawing parallel reference to Bhagavad Gita along with expressions of Swami Shivarandya. <laughs> Voluminous discussions, assertions, expositions have been made and are being made even today on God and the usual questions in the minds of commoners like us which arise quite often in our life such as, is there God? What is God? Who is God? How is God? Where is God? And fundamentally, what is his relationship between me and all other beings in the world? In what way he is related to the events and happenings in life. These are old eternal questions and such questions are admirably answered in Bhagavad Gita and various other scriptures of our Hinduism. These are answered to our entire satisfaction by the spiritual giants from time to time. Let us now take a glimpse of Swami Shivananda's teachings in brief. First let us take the question, is there a God? The answer is, certainly there is God, certainly God is. God is your creator, he is your saviour, he is your redeemer, that is Prabhavapralayasthanam Nidhanam Bijam Abhyayam. Then God is all pervading. Maya Tatamidam Sarvam Jagadavyakta Murthina. Gatir Bharta Prabhu Sakshihi. He is the protector. He is the eternal witness to all the happenings in the world. He dwells in your heart. Sarva Bhutasthamatmanam. Hridi Sarvasya Vishthitam. Or Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam. Hridi Shorjuna Tishthati. How can I find God? You can't find him through traditional instruments of perception, that is, sense organs, mind and intellect. You can find him through feeling, experience, through meditation. What do you find through such feelings or when you reach that height? What do you find? We find that God is behind all names and forms. But one nameless, formless essence behind all governors, he is one supreme governor. Behind all lights is one light illumining all other lights. Jyoti Shamapita Jyotihi Tamasap Paramuchyate. Behind all sounds, there is soundless supreme silence. All sounds, in fact, arise from soundless absolute silence, which is Nigudha, which is secret. Ramana Maharshi tells, silence is eternal eloquence. 
this appears very strange but that is true maunam chaivasmi guhyanam then continuing behind all teachers he is the one supreme guru that is he is guru of gurus god is the only reality behind all things what we see around behind all perishable objects he is one imperishable absolute yaha sa sarveshu bhuteshu nashyatsu na vinashyati behind all motions is the one motionless absolute behind time that is minutes days hours years and so on one timeless eternity is called as deshatita and kalatita he has beyond he is beyond einstein in world of space and time god is the totality of all that exists animate and inanimate sentient and insentient he pervades over all of them and he is the witness of all that happens maya dhyakshena prakriti he सूयते सूयते स चराचर हेतुना जगद्विपरीवर्त गाड इज फ्री फ्रम आल लिमिटेशन ईज अम्निपोटेंट इज अम्निशियंट अम्निप्रसंट ईज सर्वशक्ता सर्वज्ञ एंड सर्वव्यापी गाड इज द ओनली रियालिटी इन द वर्ल्ड गाड इज द हाइएस्ट पर्पज our highest good our highest gain in the world matta parataram nanyate kinchitasti dhananjaya or yam labdhva cha param labham manyate na adhikam tatah there cannot be any gain higher than the gain of wisdom of knowledge wisdom or knowledge of god all the things in the world depend on, depend on him but he not depending on anything he is nirashraya there is food to appease hunger water to quench thirst urge to be always happy there must be something to satisfy this urge this something is god he is an embodiment of happiness and bliss god is immortality freedom perfection peace and bliss he is changeless among all changes he is a cosmic being he is called as avyaya purusha he is supreme refuse nivasa sharanam suhrit he is smaller than the smallest larger than the largest anoraniya mahato mahiyam individual soul and brahman the absolute are one in essence soul of a cat and soul of a rat is one essence in the sun and the moon is one yada jityagatam tejaha jagat bhasayate khilam yachandram api yachagno tat tejam vidhi mamakam to sum up god is one homogeneous essence in all forms this is the essence this is the absolute or the immortal or this essence is called in vedantic terms brahman friends with all these explanations explanations probably we are more confused than being clear but this is the uh, this happens because god is not an object of perception as we are all familiar whenever we say we have to understand god we always bring in the normal method of understanding of the objective world but this very method itself is not applicable to god in fact god cannot be defined god in absolute terms cannot be understood in the traditional meaning of understanding and god is virtually anirvachaniya he is indescribable through words if you describe something then it is not god so this difficulty is resolved in upanishadic terms and in various ways Upanishads or the masters have tried to interpret these declarations in a manner 
relatively simpler to the common man to understand what is God. Anyway, if we get a, 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 a even if a glimpse of understanding of these statements, probably much is done to understand God. But let us try to what you call munch these words or statements and try to figure out ourselves within. This is the only way to understand, understand or feel God in the real sense. Whatever be the explanations we hear or read, they are too inadequate to project God. In fact, the finite mind, how can that interpret or understand infinite God? Therefore, the answer is, until and unless we, we purify the mind, unless and until we make the intellect study, unless and until we purge away all the impurities of the heart, any amount of explanations on God in the best possible manner of communication, God still remains a mystery. In fact, this is the declarations of all the men of wisdom. But we don't have to lose hope. First step is we have to cleanse our mind, we have to cleanse our heart. That is the preparatory step. Without doing it, if we try to attempt to describe God or to understand God, it's going to be a very futile step in the sense we may get more disappointed than being clear about God. With this background, let us try to contemplate on the various statements declared by the Upanishads, reinterpreted by the Masters, and try to have a glimpse of that immortal bliss which is residing in our own heart. Hari Om.